him apart, I'd lose it. Mm -hmm. In the old days, I wasn't smart enough to do that. I would agree with the girls that laughed. It didn't work that way. So I learned to, to say, we'll try another thing. So I had a record, which I played. It's a guy talking about aviation and it was a heavy English accent, Oxford. So I said, Lou, picture that guy. He says, I see a skinny white man with eyeglasses and a bald head. Smart college graduate, because the language he used about airplanes. Aeroplanes, he said. And he's a smart guy, and he's telling us. And then 15 minutes after the record is on, the image comes on. It's a black guy raised in England, speaking with an Oxford accent. An aeronautical engineer. Mm -hmm. And Lou says, Goddamn nigger talking like an Englishman. How come? <laughs> That's what his reaction. So I said, Well, that nigger was brought up in a different environment. So if you took a nigger, this is his words, and you brought him up in France, he'd speak with it like a Frenchman. If you brought him up in Italy, he'd speak like an Englishman. In it's Italian. If I took your son, Lou, and brought him up by a black Negro family, black nigger, that's what he is. Nigger family, your baby. He said, Dad's right, you're right, mm -hmm. just like a Negro. Do you understand that, Lou? He said, You mean to say niggers act like niggers because they're brought up in the nigger environment? I said, Lou, that's not what I'm saying. I showed them French movies of blacks brought up in France. In Sweden, they speak Swedish. They don't speak like a black man. And they don't all jazz. That's in America. You know, all blacks are different. They don't all like watermelon, you know, all the stuff we project out there. So Lou said, have you got any proof of that? And I said, Lou, uh, you give me a problem with your family or your dogs. Well, my dogs never listen to me. I said, of course they don't, because you don't know how to reach them. He said, well, how do you reach a dog? dog? I said, doggy. I said, here's how you reach a dog. If you hold them down, and say stay and move away. If they get up, when you say stay, hold them down, give them a little bit of something they like. The dog just gives a little bit. And then if they stay there, pat them on the head when you come back. And don't let them, all animals try to dominate. If you get a new animal, he'll try to go in his own direction. If you pull him and restrict his movement, you're the boss. When a dog comes in the presence of a stronger animal, he'll lie on the ground and says, I don't want to get involved. I don't know if you know that. Lions do that. Wolves do that. They fight each other. And the other wolf will lie on the ground like that. Mm -hmm. He'll fight a little bit, but if the other one is more dominant, more aggressive, he becomes the leader. Also, leadership, I think I try to describe it, when an animal is nursing other animals, the baby animals push <coughs> some away that are weaker. And that one always becomes a leader. You remember that? Leadership is not inborn, it's a result of. Yes. You do need so, a mantulate pig. I got the paper. Oh. You can pull that over to you. It's the table yeah. in front of you. Yeah. So what I did as a final thing with the clan, I made a movie called The Immaculate Pig during the Depression. Yes. I lived in a can transit camp that the government built out for the kids that were dispossessed, families thrown out of their home, millions of us. We were asked to sign in in a transit camp. If you left, you couldn't come back. But there were transit camps all over the country. So being in the transit camp, the unemployed psychologists used to run the camps. So I said to the leader, his name was Holt, Dr. Holt, I said, can I do animal experiments? while I was in the camp, he said, what kind of experiments? You know, he's a nice guy. So I said, well, I want to see if I can train animals to do things differently than most people do. He said, what kind of difference? So I said, I don't know how far I can go with animals, but I have an idea. I would like to condition a pig, a real pig, to become immaculate. So I said, that's interesting. How would you do that? I explained a little bit. Then he said to me, I have a Bolex camera. Would you mind taking pictures of what you're doing with the animal? I said, no, I'd be delighted. The way I got into animals, I used to catch snakes for the North Miami Zoo. 
they gave me a nickel a foot. If it was poisons, 25 cents a foot. So while I had raccoons and other animals in <coughs> cages, I wanted to see if I, I can do. I had so many animals, I couldn't maintain them. I had to work three hours a day in the transit camp. They gave you 75 cents a week for cigarettes or candy, but we grew our own food. Roosevelt set that up. So in the transit camp, I, I wanted money for experimenting. So I used to catch snakes and sell it to the North Miami Zoo. But I couldn't take care of all the animals, so I designed cages from surplus wire I got from buildings. I built wire cages and put the animals in them. It's like I have five raccoons. When they got fed, they get fed at the other end of the cage. But to get there, you had to go through a turnstile. I built a turnstile, you know, the animal had to turn them. And that swept all the crumbs out of their cage down below to the ants that ate the stuff, the dirt. So I could maintain more animals designing that stuff like that. So I eventually got to the pig. I put a pig in a cage about six feet in diameter. It was dome-shaped, made of wire. When I put the pig in, I put a wastebasket in the middle of the cage. And I put the wastebasket down so it's level with the floor. Can you picture that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I put some crumpled paper near it. It didn't stick up like this. And I figured that the pig... Want to draw anything here? I might if you need to. to. I don't know. But anyway, I figured sooner or later the pig would hit that paper and knock it into the basket. Yeah. basket. Because any animal put in a cage walks up and back. Or if a man is put in prison, he does walk up and back like an animal. So I figured that would happen in time. I didn't have to be there. I could take care of my other animals. I came back and I noticed that the pig, that this paper was in the basket. Once that happened, nothing happened with the pig. But after four or five times, I put a micro switch in the bottom of the basket. When the paper hit the switch, a food dispenser dispensed a little bit of food, not much. After the pig had to do it ten times before he knew that the paper in the basket worked the dispenser of food. Mm. Pigs don't do it right away. Yeah. Some pigs ten, fifteen times. But anyway, once the pig knew that, once the pig picked up and put it in the basket, the dispenser dispensed food. I kept moving the dispenser further and further away from the basket. Then I put a second piece of paper there. So when he put the first piece in, nothing happened. But the associative memory of the paper, he picked up the second piece and put it in. Then the dispenser dispensed food. Then I put some dirty rags around, and the pig came in, put them in the basket. Mm -hmm. Remember, I pulled the basket up, and it says on the basket, put waste here. Huh. See, the pig couldn't read or anything. <laughs> so he put the waste in the basket, and he'd go to another room, because I kept moving the dispenser further and further away. Then I designed a bed for the pig. Here's how the bed looked. If you don't understand the drawing, you're supposed to interrupt me. I took a roller made of wood like that and another roller here and ran the bedding all around the roller. Do you understand the drawing? Mm -hmm. The bedding is like a war train, a tractor. Yeah. And the pig would sleep on that mattress. When he got up, I made the cage that he slept in very small. So he'd walk up and back a lot, and I put a wheel at the end, connected to that roller. If you put a wheel on a cage with little mice in it, they get in the wheel and run. You don't have to teach them that. Adrenaline. They got a lot of energy. They get in the wheel and they run. The pig got up on this wheel and began to turn it. That changed the dirty bed sheet. Wow. 